So think about the very first time that you saw a jacked fellow in real life. You're either gonna see him do bench press, push-ups, or pull-ups. I know for me, it was a Rocky II workout montage where he's just going to town on that tire and then he's busting out the one on pull-ups. I was sold personally as a child after that. But you'd like to get better at them, right? You'd like to do more reps, get a heavier weight at pull-ups, right? So I wanna break that down on a beginner, intermediate, and advanced level so that you can progress no matter where you happen to be at. Now, this is going to be part of a back series, you know, videos that I release sequentially. The next video is gonna be about how to build a freaky V taper. If y'all like this video, let me know if you wanna see that next episode and then we'll go ahead and do it. All right, the basics. So these are important no matter where you're at. They're more important the stronger and the bigger that you get, but you need to eat to support your training. You need to drink enough water to support your training. You need to get your electrolytes in. You need to try hard and you need to sleep as much as you can. Now that's not to say if that you can only sleep for six hours because of your schedule. Am I telling you that you're not gonna build muscle? Of course not. I'm talking about the Sammy sausage head that stays up until four in the morning playing video games or whatever. Look, man, I've been there, but if you're serious about building muscle, you need to prioritize and maximize these things. Now, also, if the question is, should I bulk? The answer is yes. Fellas that need to cut, know damn well that they need to cut typically, right? It, so if you're asking me if you need to bulk, more than likely, nine times out of 10, yes, you need to bulk. Now, in terms of the beginner level, I'm gonna classify that into two distinct levels. There's level one where you can't do any yet, whether you're light and you're just not strong enough to do your body weight, or you're too heavy and you're still not strong enough to do your own body weight. And then there's fellas that can do pull-ups, but they can only do a few of them. Starting with level one, no matter if you're too heavy or too light, the solution is the exact same, right? You just don't have enough muscle mass to move your body weight. So to get more muscle mass, you're gonna take exercises that you can do for a lot of reps. Break the pull-up down into what muscle groups allow you to move your body. It's the upper back, the lats, and the arms, essentially, like the biceps, brachialis, forearms. So you're gonna wanna pick movements that work those muscle groups. So a few that I like for upper back, lats, and arms, it just depends upon what your style of pull-up is, whether it's a pull-up or a chin-up, but I really like for the upper back, meadows rows and dumbbell rows with a pronated grip where you're coming out at an angle so that you're hitting your upper back and your rear delts. Now for lats, I like a close or neutral grip, lat bias row. That could either be, again, with a dumbbell row where you could do something like a close grip, neutral grip pull down. That'd work really well. If you're at home, get a pulley system. You can do the same thing at home. And then for arms, at a beginner level, it's really just gonna depend upon, again, what your style of pull-up is. You're gonna end up doing both anyway. But to start off with, if you do pull-ups, you're gonna work that brachialis because, you know, it kind of simulates what a hammer curl does, a pull-up. And then if you do chin-ups, you're gonna do some sort of supinated curl. I really like incline curls. So you can do that with a dumbbell or with cables. Now I have a really simple progression model on the screen. I've used it in a lot of my different videos, but I wanna explain it a little bit more. And then a principle that I want y'all to follow since we're testing pull-up strength, and you're gonna to need to do them again at some point. It's called a double progression. So it's really key when you're doing a double progression that like, for example, if you're supposed to do three sets of eight, that first set of eight cannot be the failure if you wanna stay at the weight that you're using on your first set, AKA your top set. It has to be something that is challenging, but you know that like, okay, I could have done two more reps if I wanted. Most of y'all are gonna mess that up the first time you do it, the second time you do it, the third time you do it. I invite that mess up. You need to know what muscular failure feels like. You also need to know what it feels like when you're sandbagging, AKA you think it's two reps in reserve, but it's really five. So that's like the mindset that you need to have to make sure that you can complete a full three sets of eight and then be able to make progress. Because if you do a set of eight to failure, your next set is only gonna be six reps at that same weight. That's probably gonna be the failure too. And then the last set's probably gonna be four reps as opposed to doing one where, you know, like you have a couple reps in reserve. And then the next set is also eight reps. It's a little harder. And then that last set is the failure. You, you picking up what I'm putting down? After you run that double progression a couple of times, like two or three, just test to see if you can do a pull-up, bro. Pull-ups aren't very fatiguing. If you just try it and fail, it's no big deal. Just keep getting more jacked, bro. Eventually, through getting more jacked and stronger in all the muscles that are used in a pull-up, you're gonna be able to do one. Now keep repeating this over and over again until you can do five pull-ups. And then that's when we can move on to our next step. Beginner level two is now you can do a few pull-ups, but you still can't do enough to use pull-ups as a hypertrophy exercise. You're gonna do something really cool now called greasing the groove, right? So now that you can do like five pull-ups, this is worth doing for you. That's a giga brain way of saying, look, man, you're gonna take two or three reps, 
and just do it over and over and over again throughout the course of your workout or throughout the course of your day if you have the time. Now you're not doing them back to back to back. It's like between exercises, you know, every 10 or 15 minutes in the midst of your workout, you're gonna do like two or three pull-ups. That might not sound like a lot, but that adds up a lot over the course of a workout to the point where now you're aiming for doing 20 to 30 reps of pull-ups and you're getting that per workout on top of your bodybuilding stuff. Now, another thing you'll notice is, is that you're gonna start to need more volume to continue to get more jacked. Real easy, man. Just add another back exercise and another arm exercise. Now, the same thing with level one. This is a principle that you need to learn called earning your absolute PRs. When you get really strong, you just can't go to the gym and max out all the time. So every couple cycles, I just want you to test your max rep out on pull-ups. What you'll find is you go through two or three double progression cycles. You're gonna be able to do like seven, eight pull-ups and you're gonna keep doing that until you get to the point where you can do sets of 10 on pull-ups pretty comfortably. It's challenging, but you can do multiple sets of 10. Once you get to the point where now you're busting out sets of 10, you're now at the intermediate level and we can start to use pull-ups as our hypertrophy exercise and do weighted pull-ups. This is also where things change up a little bit. Because you're now strong enough to do weighted pull-ups and use pull-ups as our hypertrophy exercise, for you to continue to get better at them, greasing the groove is not really gonna be as effective as it was when you were at those beginning stages, in my opinion. At this point, it's a lot more practical and more effective to do weighted pull-ups on one day, do body weight pull-ups on another day in different, different rep ranges. So I have those up on the screen. What I wanna explain is the difference in progression this time. So it's still a double progression, but it's a little different. Instead of you filling out a rep range, you're going to increase the weight on a set once you can maximize the amount of reps in that set. So that's just the giga brain way of saying, if it's a three sets of eight to 12, once you can get to 12 reps on that first set, increase in weight on that set, and then on the second set, since you're not able to get 12 reps on that yet, you stay at that weight until you can get 12 reps with it and then you increase in weight and so on and so forth. As an intermediate, you're not able to progress as quickly and you need to space out that your progression a little bit more than you did when you were more new to the gym. You can't just continuously make the same rate of progression throughout your training career. Now for your other, at this point, accessory exercises, you can still follow a double progression on them. You can do the double progression that we just described as well if you want, but you know, keep it simple, bro. The advanced stage is interesting because this is where a lot of fellas are just gonna branch off in different directions in terms of what they wanna do with their training. But you know you're at the advanced stage when you can hit a combined total of 300 pounds for one rep on a pull-up or chin-up, or you can do 70% of that, which is 210, I think, for 10 reps. But once you can do that, you're at the advanced stage and in my opinion, you can continue to do the double progressions and just train for hypertrophy, or you can start to train for absolute performance, which is what most people wanna train pull-ups for in the first place, I'm just being real with you. Now, if you wanna continue to train for hypertrophy, just continue to refine your form, rep quality, and follow those double progressions. But if you wanna get a big old, big man weighted pull-up, you need to start pacing yourself out even more than we just did in the previous level. I'm gonna explain that all on a whiteboard. Some of the principles that you wanna take into strength training, we're gonna go back inside and talk about that there. All right, what's up fellas? We're back inside. I'm gonna break down some more advanced training stuff than I've talked about on this channel in a long time. I'm not gonna make it super complicated, but because you're advanced, that's how we have to talk about it. So there's two basic ways that I like to approach what Sam actually calls the battering ram. So the idea with a battering ram is if you just knock it against the door, you're not infiltrating any castle walls, bro. You have to walk back and then walk forward to rush through the door. So that's more or less how these two approaches are paced out. So there's two ways that I like it. I lean with the right more often than not when I make strength-based programs because here, I need to know your maxes, right? And I don't know y'all's maxes. And you don't know your maxes either more than likely since you've tested them recently. But if I'm working with someone on a one-on-one -on -one basis, I do use this sometimes. So we'll explain the first one. As I said, you have to know your one rep max thereabouts for you to be able to use this accurately. What this is, is you use your percentage of your one rep max and you just do sub-maximal volume with it essentially. There's two different ways that I like to program this particular approach actually. So like I said, 
you may do something like three sets and you give yourself an RPE cap of six to seven. And then over time, that'll be three sets at RPE nine, right? Another way I like doing it is basically the same thing, except for that last set will be an AMRAP. Now I typically will only program the AMRAP if this fella doesn't happen to be doing a, a whole lot of volume with this exercise, either on that exercise or with an accessory. So like Sam, for example, he typically does these AMRAPs. Now this will go all the way down. So you go through 60, 63 to 65%, and then you'll incrementally add percentages. You spend about two, three weeks on each until you get to 101%, and that's a PR, obviously, and you are gonna AMRAP this. It's more than likely gonna be a single, but if you can secure a double, do that. But secure your PR first, that's the prince of what I'll tell you guys about there. Now, in terms of the second approach, so this paces you out really well. This is really simple. I got this from Freaky D, honestly. He, from a lot of his older videos, uses like a linear periodization for strength work, and in my opinion, is super simple and very effective. You don't have, you don't have to get giga brain with it. Now this is more popular, I would say, with like the, the Joey Flex style of powerlifting programming, is having an RPE based top set and then percentage based back down. So you're using percentages and RPE on both, but it's just the way that you implement it is a little different. So the difference is, and they're very similar in principle, by the way, the method is different. Methods are many, principles are few. Week one, you're gonna start with like a top set of, for example, eight, and you're gonna have an RPE six cap on that. So that's how you progress. You just progress in terms of RPE. You'll go from week two, RPE seven, so on and so forth, till you get to week four, you're at RPE nine. Where you use the percentages on the back downs. So you'll do two sets with 12% less weight at the same number of reps. Sometimes I'll program greater, but for the purposes of this video, just use the same number of reps. Now, once you get to like RP 9, 10, whatever, the week after that, you're gonna need to pull back a little bit, right? The battering ram, you need to fucking pull back so that you can infiltrate under the castle wall. So you're just gonna do the same thing at a lower rep range at RP 6, right? So, fuck, I can't write, RP 6. Wherein you had a set of eight here, you're gonna do a set of six, but with the same uh, percentage back downs, and that's more or less how you would do it in that manner. I really recommend trying out to see what you like more, and then use what you know aligns more with your personality type. So if you're uh, very by the books, you're you're not the best with exact RPEs. All that's important here is that these sets are sub maximal because it's gonna make you lift heavy eventually as these percentages get heavier. You know what I'm saying? If you're accountable with load selection, you can trust yourself with using the exact RPE. Do this, but either will work. I'll see y'all back outside. All right, fellas, that's all she wrote. Check the description for a free program. There's a beginner, intermediate, and advanced version. I haven't eaten yet, so I'm gonna go back in the house and get something to eat. If you wanna see that freaky V taper video, guys, my V taper has come up tremendously in my book, so I'm very excited to talk about that. If you wanna see that, let me know. Watch these videos now that you finish this one. Have a good day.